The scripture for today's message is Joshua chapter 1 verses 6 through 8. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do to all what that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Amen. United Choir and Nisi Orchestra will glorify God with their praise. Acting Senior Pastor will deliver the message under the title uh, Be Strong and Courageous. Now she is before the podium. Let's welcome her uh, by shouting Hallelujah! We give all things in glory to Father God who has protected us during the 2022. Thank you, the elders, for glorifying God with your mighty voice. And in the new year, uh, the, they sang about the, what we are talking about as the first prayer title. At the beginning of the praise, he blew the ram's horn trumpet. You know that it is hard to blow that trumpet, but he was good at blowing that. He did a good job blowing that trumpet. There were also several people who uh, blew the trumpet, that ram's horn trumpet, but you know that it is not a good, it's not easy to blow that. I hope you wrap up the year well and march on vigorously in the new year. Your, we, I could feel passionate response from the audience, even in this studio, but they even asked for an encore. But with a round of applause, we will respond to their uh, praise. Let me introduce uh, today's flower offering. Um, it's offered by the members of an overseas branch church. We are grateful for uh, that we met the precious church, heard the gospel of holiness, and came to live a happy Christian life towards New Jerusalem. We also give thanks for the grace that we have always protected in the shepherd's space and blessed at work so that we can give off the fragrance of Christ. Thank you, Acting Senior Pastor, who's always harboring and leading Ma Min, and Ms. Bong Lim Lee, who's leading fervent prayer unchangingly. With the heart of love and thanks, we offer the flower offering at the 2023 New Year service. Thank you. During the 2022, um, there were always uh, beautiful flower arrangements. Especially uh, overseas branch members donated the flower offerings. And as, as Ms. Bong Lim Lee told us, people already uh, offered the flower things for the new year. We see how our overseas branch church members love our church. Thank you. And we only have one hour, one hour and a half left for the new year to arrive. Do you know, what, what do you think the world of people are doing? They are probably before their TV sets or they are trying to prepare for the new year. At, they also go to go up the mountains to see the sunrise or other people go to the coast. They must be driving towards the coast now. There may be different kinds of people, but you are offering this service to welcome the new year and you with a resolution to march on during the new year. You are so blessed. 
It is very important that what kind of start we have, but you are starting off with by offering the service to Father God, and you commit things to God. So Father God is pleased, and we know how prosperous we will be during the year, and we are filled with anticipation. So we are now at a point where we are wrapping up this year. I once again thank you for all the uh, church workers. I, I thank you all. And I also, on behalf of the church, I also thank and senior pastor and Ms. b o n g i m Lee and all those who have worked for the church. Let's also give thanks to Ms. b o n g i m Lee with a round of applause. We Please, we ask you to help us pray fervently even in the new year. Now she's doing the found prayer meeting, and we had a meaningful day s wrapping up the year with the v a l p i r We are offering the prayer repentance, and we are welcoming the new year with a clean and sanctified heart. I think you are filled with hope and expectation for the new year. So, I also... As I think about the new year, I feel more, um, I, f- I feel better, I, I feel with expectation. And as I began the preparatory praise, I was very happy. I hope you also welcome the new year with such a heart and may all your days of the new year be victorious before Father God. Today, uh, I'm preaching about the first prayer subject for the new year. Through this message, I will explain what kind of goals we would have. I hope, brothers and sisters, Moses, the leader of the Exodus, manifested great and amazing power, bringing down the ten plagues on Egypt, splitting the Red Sea, and having his people pass through it by as by dry land. Through the faith of Moses, their leader, the entire Israel was able to experience God's works and march towards Canaan. But after the Exodus, God demanded faith and obedience of the entire people of Israel, not just those of Moses. Namely, in order to enter the land of Canaan, the Israelites themselves had to demonstrate faith and obedience. For this reason, God refined them in the wilderness for many years, and when the second generation obeyed with faith, He granted them the blessings of Canaan. As the faith of the entire people reached a befitting level in God's size, they were finally able to conquer the promised land of Canaan. God selected Joshua to become the leader of Israel following Moses' death. Staying closest to Moses, Joshua learned from him and obeyed. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, as God commanded Joshua to be strong and courageous, he said, Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. In the passage, Father God ta- uh, was talking to uh, the verses, it was talking to Joshua, but This message is about all of you. Consider this message to be the message to all of you, from me and to all of you. Father God is telling this message to you. He tells us to be strong and courageous and be victorious. So, all His promises will be ours and blessings will be ours. And God's message to Joshua, God meant that if people didn't depart from the word but wholly obeyed it, they would obtain what He promised 
prophet Moses, namely the land of Canaan. Josh, brothers and sisters, but the blessings about Canaan, it, actually this blessing was given to Abraham. He, God told Abraham that his descendants, his offspring, will enter this blessed land. He, God told this to Abraham in advance, and after uh, many years passed, finally, his blessings, his offspring, but the, ge- but the second generation of the Exodus enter the land of Canaan, and, and God God told them that the blessings was, were still valid and it will be given to you, but for the blessings to come upon you completely, you have to obey all the law given to Moses. You have to abide by them. Then you will have the blessings of the covenant, covenant of blessing, the blessings, the words of blessings. I mean, I, there are words that we have to fulfill, and there are things that we have to take. You shouldn't think our the blessings given to us are gone. You shouldn't hesitate and give up. It comes from our fleshly thoughts. But Father God's blessing, uh, promise, does not change. But according to how we act by faith, the outcome. Differs, it depends on us. Joshua firmly believed in this promise and obeyed. His entire people became firmly united in one heart and will to fulfill God's promise regarding Canaan. So, along with Joshua, the second generation engaged in battles to conquer the land of Canaan. Actually, this word of blessing. I mean, the first generation of the Exodus was marching towards Canaan, but they couldn't have the blessing. But their children who saw their parents' trials and learned from those trials And through those trials, they prepared themselves and they were ready to obey with Amen. What about us? I mean, it's not that they automatically took the land right after the 40-year trials. Based on the faith and obedience they built up through trials, they had to take the land. They had to demonstrate faith and obedience, and so they engaged in battles. There were years of battles that followed, as we find in the book of Joshua, and as we find in the sermon series, The Land Flowing with Milk and Honey. It's similar with our situation, isn't it? We have to fulfill our blessings. Uh, But this wasn't to be achieved by Joshua's faith alone, but that of each tribe, namely that of the entire people. It's the same in this church. When the church workers and members were still weak in faith, God's providence was fulfilled through the faith and obedience of the shepherd. But for the sake of completing His providence in the end time, what God ultimately demands from this church is the faith and obedience of all of us. Moreover, our goal is New Jerusalem. Our heavenly dwelling place is gained by our individual faith. Just because the church mightily glorifies God and brings together many souls doesn't mean God allows a good dwelling place to all its members. As the each and every member improves spiritually, they, uh, for this reason, God is refining each and every one of you through this 
church wild trials. When the Israelites were with Prophet Moses, they were happy and filled up with the Spirit with the experiences of the Red Sea being split and the bitter water of m a r a turning sweet. But before the conquest battles, if they had said, it's too demanding, we cannot fight, they wouldn't have entered Canaan. Now all of us should demonstrate faith and obedience like those of the second generation of the Exodus and conquer Canaan. Therefore, I pray that in the new year, you fully obey the word, become more than able to overcome the world with a strong and courageous faith, and vigorously march towards New Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, out in the world, people call a person who is physically strong, fights well, and imposes his opinions on others, strong and courageous. But no matter how strong and courageous someone is, there is a limit to his physical strength and courage. And uh, he may boldly confront a situation which he can deal with on his own, but when he encounters someone or a hardship beyond his ability to handle or a death-like situation, he would succumb in fear. But even if a person is physically weak and frail, as he's strong and courageous spiritually, he wouldn't be afraid of even death. For example, when Christians were martyred during the Roman Empire, even little children and the old and females who were weak boldly confessed their faith in the Lord and willingly got martyred because they had spiritual strength and courage. Those with spiritual, such spiritual strength and courage can confront the enemy devil and Satan without fear and achieve victory. Uh, they, were, uh, they were not afraid. They didn't give up their faith. Uh, nothing mattered because they had spiritual faith and uh, hope for heaven. And they be- had hope for resurrection. They had no fear. So, they were able to be martyred with boldness, saying, Hallelujah. Those with spiritual strength and courage can confront the enemy devil and Satan without fear and achieve victory. Also, when they are in, when they are in need of something, they can boldly ask God and receive His prayer. Uh, answer? Do you want to receive a quick answer? Do you want to receive whatever you ask God? Do you want to... you think it will be good if that happens to you, then you have to stay, stand bold before God. Then how can we be, become spiritually... Uh, how can we be bold? How can we be strong and courageous? Um, first, we need spiritual faith. During the Exodus, even though the Israelites experienced God's power numerous times in the face of a trouble, they resented Moses. They left Egypt, witnessing the ten plagues and a marvelous work of the Red Sea being split. They also incessantly experienced God's amazing power even thereafter, but they failed to change their heart in the truth and demonstrate spiritual faith. Whether you have spiritual faith or not is confirmed during the trials. When things are peaceful, everyone seems to have faith. Everyone seems to run passionately. But whether someone is truthful or not is confirmed during the trials or hardship. But in the face of a trial, how they are different? Some people, uh, when when they find their situation different from their thoughts, they complain and grumble. That means they don't have spiritual faith. But others, even though they are in trouble, they look to God and stay joyful and thankful and silently wait for God's answer. That means uh, they have a spiritual faith. Whether you are running with spiritual faith during the trials, some people used to be filled up with the Spirit when there was a shepherd, and they seemed to offer all of themselves, but in the times of trial, they began to complain, uh, pour out evil through their lips, and they lose the boldness, but they became weary, and, and they lost the faith of God's promises for this church, and they lose the passion to advance into a better dwelling place. That means they lacked spiritual faith and during the trial they lose even 
But as we wrapped up this year, I think you have repented diligently. But anyway, in the 2023, you have to run with spiritual faith. It depends on you. If you still look at the reality, complain and grumble and argue, you are not given spiritual faith. But if you, we have seen many works of God. If we just hold on to one or, or two of them and remember them, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't lose your spiritual faith and you wouldn't if you hold on to just one or two of the sh shepherd's power that you've experienced you would you can believe that Father God is living and Father God is guaranteeing him you wouldn't think like uh, you wouldn't consider so even when you're in trouble you would look to God and this is the shortcut to developing spiritual faith so you have to check your lips and so I hope you improve yourself spiritually during the times of trial and solidify but the first generation of the Exodus couldn't demonstrate faith and before even before the land of Canaan they couldn't receive the land. They had to go back to the wilderness and wander there for 40 years. They sent out spies on two occasions. In the beginning of uh, earlier, they sent 12 spies uh, they represented each tribe and 10 spies made negative reports and people agreed with them and they even tried to stone Moses. So even with the land of Canaan before their eyes, they had to go back to the wilderness and went through the 40-year trial and then after that, they sent two spies and they were protected by Rahab. How lamentable this is. The first generation of the Exodus, even with their blessings right before their eyes, they couldn't get them. They used to dance joyfully. They praised how great Father God is. So, because they experienced such works, they should have demonstrated their faith. Father God expected them to demonstrate faith. But in times of tests, how did you win victory during those times? You have to examine yourself. You have to know, figure out why you have failed to receive an answer during the times of trial. If you have received answers in healing, you I mean, Moses led the first generation of the Exodus. People complained and grumbled. They were joyful when they saw God's work, but soon they lost their faith. But Moses was totally different. But as for Prophet Moses, no matter the trouble he faced, he pleaded with God only with faith. The reason was, he believed from his heart that God who led the Israelites knew all the situation and nothing was impossible with him. Among the 12 spies that spied on the land of Canaan, the 10 made a negative report. You know, on first occasion, the 12 spies went out to spy out the land, and 10 of them made a negative report. But Joshua and Caleb confessed that they would be more than able to conquer it if God was with them. But this is how fleshly faith differs from spiritual faith. I explained about that several times. All of them saw the same land, but their reports were totally different. The ten made evil report, and they incited other people to be agitated. 
they had to take, they bore such great responsibility. But Joshua and Caleb showed faith in Father God. That's how they could enter Canaan. Moses, Josh, Caleb, and Joshua believed people who rely on the Almighty God don't look to, look to the reality but just press on with faith. As they do so, someone who is realistic may think that they are being reckless, like they are driving themselves into a crisis. But as far as those with spiritual faith are concerned, they are displaying a deed of wholly relying on God because they believe without doubt that God would stretch out His hands of power and protect them, they can do so. This is the difference between the spiritual faith and fleshly faith. My spiritual faith? I mean, even but people with spiritual faith even when they are standing at the edge of the cliff when God tells them to fall off the cliff they obey uh, they are like Abraham who offered his only begotten uh, only, his only son as a burnt offering he offered his own son he raised his sword and was about to offer him as a burnt offering. With what kind of a... He believed that Father God would revive him even from the dead. He believed in such great God because he had perfect faith in him. He bound his son and took out his sword. Such faith is truthfulness itself, so they have power to drive away the darkness and make impossible things possible. But many Christians expect God's work. So when they're in trouble, they ask God to resolve their problems. Even though they ask, they but they ask without spiritual faith. That's why they cannot receive an answer from Him. But with spiritual faith, people would act like Moses, like Caleb and Joshua. They wouldn't look at the reality, but only to God. But our Rami members, uh, such grace is not given to only selected individuals. Whoever trusts and relies on the Almighty God can have courage and become strong with God's power. From 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 31 onward, the boy David confessed that when he tended his fathership, a lion or a bear would come and take a lamb. Then he would go out after him, risking his own life, rescue the lamb, and defeat him. Also, in the name of God, the Lord of hosts, he fought the tall Philistine warrior Goliath, who frightened King Saul and his generals and defeated him. But actually, before Goliath, the army of Israel went away in fear. But David confessed to King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32, uh, Let no man's heart fail on account of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. When you despair in your reality it's not faith if you give up in despair if you say I have no strength to work faithfully I have no strength to pray it's not faith and Father God cannot work for you to receive God's help you have to be strong and courageous you shouldn't complain about lack of strength even when you have no strength you have to cry out in prayer even when you have no strength to raise up your hand, you have to raise your hand. On, then God's strength comes upon you, but you have, shouldn't complain about lack of strength because you have no spiritual faith. If you complain like that, the enemy devil would rejoice. They would make you feel more troubled. They will joyfully lead you to be more you shouldn't say it's impossible but you have to believe you have to confess that you can do everything in God who strengthens you 
you have to cry out and raise your hand. Then Father God will work for you. You shouldn't despair. You shouldn't be discouraged. You shouldn't be saddened. Then instead, you have to be joyful and press on boldly. He also boldly proclaimed to uh, uh, David also boldly proclaimed to Goliath who was scoffing at him in You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands, and I will strike you down and remove your head from you, and I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. Brothers and sisters, we should also have such faith. You have to recite such verses again and again. Whenever we recite that, we feel strengthened and feel energetic. The confessions of uh, uh, the confessions of the Joshua and Caleb. Whenever you are in trouble, you have to remind yourself of their confessions and be strengthened. And you have to shatter your fleshly thoughts in doing so. The reason that David achieved victory wherever he went was that he had faith by which he wholly trusted the Almighty God and believed that he was with him. Uh, God, set up, God set up this David as a king to rule over Israel and greatly bless them. P- Prophet Elijah also had the faith of relying on the Almighty God, so he single-handedly confronted 850 prophets of idols at Mount Carmel. Elijah proclaimed, Let's see who would send down the fire from heaven. Elijah made that suggestion to the prophets of idols. With boldness, he was able to make that proclamation. But actually, he was in a situation where he was... All the people in Israel were worshipping idols. They were not afraid of God. So, Elijah, in the presence of the people, you know, if Elijah failed to send out fire, he would have been killed. But Elijah didn't have fear because he had faith in God, the Lord of hosts. He knew that the God, the idols were false and that only God is the true deity because he perfectly believed that he was able to make that proclamation and how God worked for him. Senior Pastor often said, Father God cannot help but work before our faith. So Elijah brought down great work. So the prophets of idols were killed and he proved to many people that Father God is the only true deity. As we can see, spiritual strength and courage come from faith. As we believe God from the depths of our heart, we can demonstrate spiritual courage as we rely on Him. When spiritual courage comes upon us, that means we have the faith of God being with us, so we have no fear in the truth. As God is pleased with that faith and drives away the enemy devil, His answer comes. Even when we have a big issue ahead of us or face a difficult problem that we find impossible to resolve, if we trust and rely on God without involving our thoughts, we have spiritual courage like that of David or Elijah and win victory. I hope that in the year 2023, you develop spiritual faith and stay strong and courageous, thereby only achieving victory both in faith and your everyday life.
to become strong and courageous spiritually. Second, we have to become sanctified. What we have to fight against and defeat is the enemy devil, the darkness. As God's children develop their faith and march towards heaven, what hinders them and causes them to stumble is the master of the darkness. We find in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Thus, we need mighty strength and courage to defeat the enemy devil. But that strength comes from sanctification. Because being sinless means strength in the spiritual realm, those who have completely cast off sins and evil and achieved the sanctification of the heart are not afraid of the enemy devil, but they can boldly confront and defeat it. Some people argue that man cannot cast off all sins and become sanctified. But sanctification can be achieved and it is also a command of God that must be carried out for sure. God said in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, Therefore you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Therefore, we have to strive for sanctification, obeying these words. The purpose of God's cultivating humans is to gain holy children whose image resembles His own. And Jesus Christ redeemed sinners not just to gain saved souls, but believers who've achieved whole spirit. God gave the first man, Adam, the authority to rule over all things under heaven. But as Adam was deceived by Satan into dis disobeying God, his authority was handed over to the enemy devil. But the enemy devil cannot claim his authority against people who have become God's children. The reason is, our Jesus came to this earth, died on the cross, shattered the power of death, and resurrected in three days, thereby delivering us from the authority of the enemy devil. So, whoever has accepted the Lord as their Savior is out of the enemy devil's authority and receives the authority as God's child. So, from that point on, he must not befriend the world of darkness controlled by the enemy devil, but live by the word of God who is a light. You, we accept the Lord. You know, we used to be the sons of darkness, but as we accept the Lord, we become, we change into children of light, children of God. But some people, even though if they commit sins continually, which do they belong? They belong to the darkness. The de enemy devil wouldn't say, uh, even though some people believe in God, they, even though they confess with their lips that they believe in the Lord, but they befriend the world, befriend, and, and then the enemy devil can claim his, their authority on those people. They are the enemy devil claims his, their authority on those people. So what would happen? So you shouldn't live in the darkness. Then you cannot enjoy the authority as God's children. And Father God cannot completely say that you belong to me. This is the law according to the law of the spiritual realm. So the enemy devil uh, among those who profess among those children of God, the enemy devil tries to take away children of God. This is the human cultivation where we fight against the enemy devil. So during the times of trial, we may have trials of the heart, we may have troubles around our you may have, we may suffer some attacks out in the world, and the enemy devil causes us to lose faith, causes us to befriend the world and love the world. The enemy devil then claims its authority on those people. 
The enemy that creates various ob obstacles, trying to hamper their prayer, brings them doubts and tempts them to follow worldly trends rather than God's will. To drive away such hindrances from the enemy devil, we have to cast up love for the world and focus on sanctification. Just because you believe in God, you believe in Jesus Christ, just because you have, that doesn't mean you can be saved. The enemy devil tries to lead you away from salvation. It continually attacks you. You have to overcome those attacks and reach heaven. Then you have to strive for sanctification continually. If you stop in the middle, you are losing in the battle against the enemy devil. But some people, after they march vigorously, they just give up and they are just satisfied with salvation. And the enemy devil causes them to lose the hope for New Jerusalem and it leads you away from salvation. And some of you may say, I still believe in God. I, I'm not betraying God. You may think that way, but spiritually, you are in a dangerous situation. You have to overcome the world and enjoy the authority as, as God's children. In order to live so, you have to strive for sanctification. As we read in 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, we know that no one who is born of God sins, but he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. When we reach the level of sanctification, the evil cannot even touch us. Being afraid of the light of sanctification, the enemy devil departs from us. So, whenever you have as much as we fully live out of word this way, we get more of the authority and strength so we can ably control the enemy devil and Satan that hold the control of the world. Consequently, all things go well with us. In today's passage, Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, God commanded Joshua to obey all the laws and told him that when he did so, he would have success wherever he went and his ways would be prosperous. It means, that if we all, it means that if only we keep the word of God completely and achieve the sanctification of heart, the enemy devil and Satan will not hinder us and we can enjoy prosperity under God's protection anytime, anywhere. In addition, since sanctified, since sanctified children are bold before God, they can receive answers to whatever they ask for. It is just as 1 John chapter 3, verses 21 and 22 say, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever, whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. Being strong and courageous means we are praying to, you should pray to become strong and courageous before God. I mean, but just as God says, uh, just as this verse says, we have to be bold and courageous before God. That doesn't mean we are being rude to God. Let's say if you are ashamed, if you are feel ashamed before God, you, you know, when people rejoice, when there is a rainbow over the sky, but you are not, when you are not bold, you don't think God is showing that rainbow for you. Even when God's answer comes upon you, you wouldn't think God, Father God did that for you. You would instead think you, God, show that favor because of others around you. Among so many people, God loves you. And God, for me, God showed me such great weather. God blessed us this way. God made me overflow with blessings. Father God gave me this joy. You have to boldly feel God's love. You have to 
have that kind of relationship. But if you are not bold before God, you would say like, Father God, I know that you didn't give this to me for me. Because you live in sins and evil, you are not bold. But if you live in the light, even in the word, if you obey, you are bold before God who is the light. So, you can ask whatever you want to ask. You can become like a child before God. You can dance joyfully like David did. This is boldness. You have to demonstrate, uh, you have to live so. By the way, if you feel unfulfilled and don't have spiritual boldness, even though you haven't created any wall of big wall of sin and you've led a diligent Christian life, what is the reason? It's because the circumcision of the heart is too slow compared to your measure of faith. You know, you don't commit the works of flesh, the sins leading to death. You don't commit those sins. And you are attending prayer meeting, you are carrying out your duties, but you don't feel joy, you don't feel such boldness. What is the reason? That means you have, I mean, you, you know, as time passes, you have to improve spiritually, but compared to your, some of you may say, If you have long been a Christian, you should have come into spirit. Then, uh, otherwise, so according to, so according to your, you have to check whether you are carrying out circumcision of your heart according to. how you've tried to achieve sanctification. When you are a novice believer or when you have small faith, only by attending church diligently and casting off the works of flesh you did before, you can be full of the Holy Spirit and pray boldly. However, as your measure of faith increases, you shouldn't be satisfied with outward actions alone, but circumcise your heart in earnest. Even while their spiritual growth has slowed down or stopped, some people don't realize it. Time is passing and you stop circumcision of the heart and you don't even realize you have a problem. So as we listen to the words during the Sunday morning service, we... There are also, there are also kind of scenes Uh, if we don't love God first, it also creates a wall of sin. Because we haven't circumcised our heart, it also creates a wall of sin. You have to realize this fact. Some of you may wonder, I mean, they don't show irritation or anger outwardly, but they are just holding it back inside. They cast off the works of flesh. They have to cast off the things of the flesh as well, but they just don't cast them off, but they're just holding it back inside. They are not arrogant in words and actions, but they have a desire to be served. They also feel resentment. They have to change their heart. They have to focus on their heart. They have to work on their sanctification, but they don't do so. Some of them have Some, some of them have deep-rooted greed by which they seek unjust benefits, even though they don't do lawlessness or deceive others. However, since they have no sins greatly revealed on the outside, they don't make enough efforts to pull out the roots of sin through fiery prayer and fasting. Also, they may briefly pray for repentance, but after some time, they leave them unattended. Like this, if you do not make an effort to completely pull out the attributes of untruth but cover them up over and over again, the joy and fullness of your heart will grow weaker and weaker, even if you stay faithful and pray in your own way. In turn, you cannot be bold before God, you somehow lack in confidence, and even if you 
pray, God's answer is slow to come. Therefore, you shouldn't stagnate in faith. As you achieve sanctification by fighting against sins to the point of bloodshed, the fullness of the Holy Spirit is maintained and you can stay strong and courageous spiritually. I'm not saying that you cannot be strong and courageous until you achieve complete sanctification. Even if you haven't been completely sanctified yet, as you strive for sanctification, God gives you grace, and to the extent you are changed in the truth, strength comes from above. Therefore, as Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. I urge you to diligently listen to, read, and recite the Word of God in the new year. And, by discovering yourself through the Word and casting off every form of evil, I pray that you can be recognized as truly righteous and sanctified children before God. Through the lectures on Job, we are, we, oh, we are discovering the evil in the depths of our heart. I know that when you discover those evil, you are happy. You, as you discover them, you are joyful and happy. I also heard some testimonies that people, even though they, they try to discover themselves, uh, they couldn't receive answer. They try to discover themselves and reflect to themselves. So finally, they received answers and blessings and give glory to God. Not only were they healed, uh, but during the process, they discovered themselves. They dis discovered the evil attributes and cast them off. They gave thanks. Father God wants this. Just staying in your position 10 years, 20 years, 30 years is not important. Just carrying out your, your, your duties habitually is not important. The important thing is how much you resemble His image, how much you work for your sanctification. This is what God truly wants from you. us. Uh, in order to be strong and courageous spiritually, third, we have to be full of the Holy Spirit. Even while we are still lacking, we can do anything empowered by the Holy Spirit. The members of the, the, members of the early churches were severely persecuted, yet being filled with the Holy Spirit, they were able to overcome all persecutions. By the way, we can receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and His strength when we stay awake and pray fervently. Even while we hear the Word of God and receive grace without prayer, we cannot get strengthened to obey. It's because we cannot cast off sins and live according to the Word by our willpower alone. No matter how determined we are, the sinful natures that are already in our heart undermine our resolution and induce us into following the old habits. In order to live according to God's word, we need our own efforts and strength from God. However, as Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 29 says, this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. We have to pray fervently in order to receive strength from above. Strength, I mean, Strength is not just about uh, praying and receiving healing, but it's, uh, strength, uh, strength also, there are also kind of strength to carry out your duties well, but that strength comes from God, and only by crying out in prayer you can bring down such strength. When we always stay awake and pray fervently, not only will our deep rooted sinful natures be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, but God's strength. and grace will empower us to practice the word. As we can see by prayer, we can ask the Almighty God and do things that we cannot do on our own. The power to overcome the world, cast up sins, and overcome persecution with gratitude. The power to practice good, the grace to stay faithful even in hardships, receiving answers and blessings, growth of our faith, manifesting spiritual ability and power, and church revival. All this is possible through prayer. In trials and tests, are you distressed with negative thoughts? Even if 
even though you don't want to get discouraged, but because of your character, you continue to feel such way, then you have to pray. Every time you pray, you have to um, drive away such thoughts, and you have to remind yourself of the, our prophet's confessions, and you have to ask God to remove such habitual, f l e s h l y thoughts, and you have to ask God to help you daily after day. If you make efforts this way, you can even you can change even your character and even remove your thoughts. You have to experience such strength of prayer in the new year. Our church has been accomplishing God's work through unceasing prayer. Thanks to the Daniel prayer meeting, our members have prayed every day to be filled with the Holy Spirit, done what, done what they cannot do on their own, and changed their heart into a heart of truth. However, if a person who s marched on well in the truth stops praying at some point, evil attributes that seem to have been cast off are provoked again, and ill feelings that have been controlled go out of control. If someone says what he hates to hear, he cannot bear it. He gets irritated and gossips about him. Deceit, judgment, hatred, envy, complaints, resentment, and ill feelings are provoked again. When you are filled up with the Spirit, they are not, but you have to root them out. Uh, you know, if you pray, you can have those a v i attributes under control. When you are filled up with the Spirit, they are not provoked. So you may be mistaken that you are sanctified. But if they are not cast off completely, they can be provoked at some point. Especially when you stop praying fervently, those feelings that have been suppressed, that have been under your control, are provoked again. If you fail to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit through fervent prayer, you cannot control your emotions, thoughts, and mind. The enemy devil and Satan tempt God's children with things of the world and untruth to make them lose faith and depart from salvation anyhow. Also, knowing that they have attributes of untruth that have yet to be cast off, such as adulterous mind, greed for money, arrogance, and resentment, the enemy devil and Satan attack them and cause them to lose faith and their fullness, zeal, and faithfulness to cool down. Everyone, in the times of trial, your weak parts are revealed. The enemy devil attacks your weaknesses. So, That means you have such uh, forms of evil in you. And when they are revealed, you have to know that you had, you've had such evil and you have to cast them off completely. If you cast, remove the roots, other kinds of evil are also cast off together. You have to admit yourself and pray without ceasing and also with fasting. You have to fight against sins that way. You have to fight against with your sinful natures until you ultimately win victory. I hope you do so in the new year. In order to do so, you have to pray. You need to to overcome the attacks, the enemy, devil, and Satan. We have to be filled up with the Holy Spirit with a fervent prayer. In Matthew chapter 25, among the ten virgins waiting for the groom, the five foolish ones were not allowed into the banquet because they did not prepare oil. Oil spiritually means prayer, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and strength. Today, when the Lord's second coming is near, in order to be qualified as His bride, we should prepare oil and stay awake. Just as we need oil to light a lamp, we should pray fervently and be filled up with the Holy Spirit. Um, when we look at the parable of the ten virgins, the five uh, foolish virgins and the wise five virgins, they all had a lamp of their own. But the foolish five ones did not prepare oil. That's why when the groom came, they were not able to attend the banquet. We accept the Lord and everyone seems to have a lamp. Everyone It seems to be a child of God, but without fervent prayer and without the circumcision of the heart, they don't have oil, so they cannot overcome the world. And when the Lord comes, they cannot be 
receive the blessing of salvation. So we have to make sure to light a Uh, we, we need a f e r f e n t prayer that lights our lamp. We strengthen by the fullness of the Spirit. We can, even if you've received the Holy Spirit and become a child of God, without prayer, you naturally lose the fullness. Then you will gradually comp- compromise with the world, live in sins and evil, and eventually you won't be able to reach salvation. No one knows the day or hour when the Lord, our bridegroom, will come again. Also, you cannot prepare oil in just, two or, in just a day or two. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 tells us, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in the view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all saints. As said, in order to maintain the fullness of the Spirit, we have to pray in the Spirit at all times and that fervently. Therefore, if you haven't prayed or have ceased to pray for a while, I urge you to set yourself a place with prayer in the new year, bring down the power of the Almighty God, and restore the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Some of you may say, because I'm praying at home, I cannot pray well. But you have to know that we also place prayer like thir- we have a sanctuary and we have a senior pastor's residence. Uh, I know that the parking lot is small. And you can come You can come and pray as we went through the pandemic. We have prayed at our homes. Of course, it is good to pray and worship together in the beautiful sanctuary, and I hope that such day will quickly come. But in our situation, as you pray, if you pray with all your heart, even though you cannot pray with a loud voice, if you, you know, Even if like you can say your prayer out loud, straining your belly, you can try more to pray. Then you can pray with your heart. You can also pray fervently. So you shouldn't. put the blame on our environment and situation, but we have to do our best within our circumstance. Actually, in many parts of the world, people face persecution. They are not allowed to gather and worship together, and they face difficulties. Those people have to pray alone in their homes and worship alone in their homes but they within their situation but they are thankful for the fact that they can worship God even in that way and they do their best but in Korea we have no persecution of of religion you know we have our neighbors around us we can even though in the sanctuary we can even though we can pray out loud and but the problem is when you pray if you fall into idle thoughts this is a problem you have a wrong habit of prayer when you pray those people even they don't remember what they prayed about even when there is a prayer subject they don't pray according to the prayer subject they don't even know what they are saying in prayer you shouldn't make an excuse that you have to pray without idle thoughts and with all your heart then when the time comes for us to gather together and pray you can pray all the more loudly and pray all the more better you may say because I cannot come to sanctuary I cannot worship him in spirit and truth if you confess that they cannot but that's an excuse it's not a matter of place Thankfully, when we turn turn on our TV, we can 
worship with GCN. Wherever you are, you can worship God with all your with all sincerity. But some people fall into idle thoughts and play with their cell phones. If they do so, even if they come to the sanctuary, they would do the same thing. So you have to check your. Uh, examine your heart, your mindset. So, you have to make sure that whenever you pray, your, you, your prayer reaches the throne of God and you receive the fullness and joy from above and overcome the world and improve spiritually and stand bold before God. Let me conclude the message. Brothers and sisters, the mission that God gave this church is to evangelize the world with the gospel of holiness in the end time and build a grand sanctuary that will reveal God's glory on all peoples. To accomplish this mission, we need a lot of spiritual warriors that are strong and courageous. I emphasize that to become spiritual warriors that are strong and courageous, first, we should have spiritual faith, second, become sanctified, and third, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I pray in our Lord's name that in the new year, all of you obey this word of God and give glory to Him without reservation as spiritual warriors who are strong and courageous. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. Amen. It's the time for the prayer for the sick. If you're sick, lay your hands on your sick part. If you're not sick, lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with your heart's desire. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, and tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commend the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses and infirmities go away, light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and transplant cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears heal well, let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy to avoid Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places and their servants go away. Go away, evil unclean, false and deceitful spirits and separating spirits and of all forces of darkness, loosen the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, go away, light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. 
As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be vandalized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children and families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let him be able to testify about the living God, saying, I have met an experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.